Hey everybody, Tracy Brown, good morning. So you see I'm outside and I am in this lovely little, like, you know, it's kind of hard to tell. There's a bunch of like, I don't know if you can see this at all, if my camera, I'm not a camera person or a photographer, so sorry if I made you dizzy, but like all around me, there's a bunch of like, let's see here, like probably on three sides, like these little, basically a lot of flowers they've planted for butterflies. So butterfly bushes and hibiscus and all kinds of really pretty stuff. So I thought I'd hang out here today. Um, the sun's coming up over on that side over there. So there's the shine. Um, but I wanted to talk about something and I actually, there's a, there's a question I, I've gotten and I've probably heard this question asked of me, I don't know, dozens and dozens of times around, you know, gosh, it feels really good to food restrict. It makes me feel powerful and successful and um, better about myself. It feels like I'm accomplishing something. And if I do lose weight, then I get compliments and I know that that's one less thing that I have to worry about in life. So every bit of that's legit. So it's, it's not an argument of that that doesn't happen, it's what do we do about it? And that was, the, that was part of the question this, this person asked me. It's like, well, how do I untangle all that? Because I don't want it to be that way and I actually feel a lot of shame for feeling like um, I want to be a smaller body so people like me more and it makes me feel kind of shallow and vain and I don't like that either. And so you can see how the conflict, sorry, there you go, that's better. You can see how there's conflict for everybody who's letting go of food restriction. And this is for people of all shapes and sizes. Um, honestly, some of the most stringent and rigorous dieters were people who were not the thinnest people. They're, you know, my clients who have been in larger bodies have been rigorously dieting for decades since they were, you know, they might come to be in their thirties and they've been dieting since they were three or five or 10 or just decades. And, you know, they've had maybe brief moments of letting it go, but for the most part, they may necessarily not have ever been binge eating. Um, it could have been mostly just restricting with a little bit of less, less restrictive eating essentially, or some moments or days of breakthrough emotional eating or binge eating or whatever. Sorry, I'm gonna keep moving to kind of keep that sun out of my eyes here. But um, so this stuff is tangled in decades of, of effort and belief and it can feel like that you're um, giving up on something. Not only people potentially liking you for your body, but just, um, you know, the cultural dictate is that like if you try hard enough, you can get the body you want. So how do we untangle all that? So the first step is recognizing or just even I want you to fathom the idea that you're not your weight, that who you are isn't the size of your body. Yes, we live in a thin, obsessed, fat phobic world, but these were man-made ideas. They're not um, reality that one size or shape is better than the other. Um, and so I just want you to wrap your brain around that, that that's not like what every human being thinks that thinner is better or that thinner people are always more successful, more happy, better, whatever. Um, it doesn't mean that if you see a, a, a smaller person that they have a, a stronger work ethic than um, a larger person or that they're smarter or they're, they know more about nutrition or go to the gym more. It's all, it's all a farce. Um, and, you know, I, I never have a good way of saying this other than to say that it's just the result of... Um, when people feel small internally, it just feels better to make other people look less and, and find a way to do that, whatever you can. So um, I'm just gonna put out there, that's, that's it. Um, I was actually working with a professional and we were talking about this. We were doing um, one of the body bashing things on one of the pro-con list for desiring thinness. And, and, I, and I would talk to clients and I was sharing with my, this professional that I often share with clients. I used to a long time ago, like, and I'm not picking on any celebrities because I have any personal thing. It's just like I always give the example of, you know, remember back in the day, you know, Jennifer Aniston. I know this is old news, but, um, you know, she's thin and she's wealthy and um, the, at least her public persona people like. Um, yet that didn't prevent, you know, divorce. That didn't prevent it being out in public for people to speculate about what that means about her. And, you know, it didn't make her 
more successful in, in romance or marriage or whatever um, just because she had a thinner body so that's just one example I give is like we have this idea that like we are buffered from sadness or heartache or criticism or whatever if we're thinner and I just give examples like that to say that like it's just not true um, do people who have thinner bodies have to deal with as much overt you know, criticism no of course not but that still doesn't mean that at the end of the day that you're going to be, you know, after, you know, when it's all said and done, you know, how do we unhook from feeling more virtuous or better about ourselves? You know, this has, it, it, this is your deeper personal work of what that means. And it's hardly ever really about like the body size. It's about what we think the body size means, but it's not actually about the size of our body. So if you're struggling with feeling like I feel more powerful and successful, what I want to say to you is, um, and I have this actually in my, um, my course, but I'm going to give you a little sneak peek about it, is that I have people go through exercises of um, the pros and the cons of pursuing thinness. And yeah, you might be able to, if you want to feel, if you believe that you're going to be more attractive when you're thinner, take off the IVE and that means attract. So you want to attract people. Okay, there's nothing inherently wrong with that, but it's like, well, who are you wanting to attract? with your thinness, only people that appreciate and desire thinness, or you, full of you. Because um, if you're busy trying to get thin, you're not gonna be putting your effort into other things that would, like being more present. Because you can't be more present if you're too busy worrying about what's on your plate and what people think about what's on your plate. It's just you can't really do two things at one time. And so that's just one example of how, you know, you work through your, your cons and you also have to work through the the, the pros, you have to work the pros of desiring thinness and work through the cons. Like, well, what does that take away? Yeah, okay, so you pursue getting thin and you might not be able to focus as well on your job, your family, what you're meant to do in the world. Um, I knew a lot of people that, um, you know, pursue, let's say, dietetics, for example, um, because of their eating issues. And, um, you know, I got into it because of that, but I really was just really invested in helping people be free. I didn't really care as much about nutrition as people probably think I do. I mean, I care about it. Um, but my main, main goal with this quote unquote credential I have is to help people actually be their, their own food expert, which is really interesting. So I help you with nutrition. But anyway, I see a lot of people go into this field thinking if they can perfect their food or eating, then they can finally feel good about themselves. If they have more wisdom or knowledge about nutrition, you know, and they're going to share that with everybody, then they can feel good about themselves. But I promise you today, if somebody, you know, um, if some kind of other plan was made for me that I'm supposed to pursue, I could let this go because it's not who I am. I love it. And I spend, obviously, you guys see me online all the time. I spend tons of time talking about this stuff because I want you to have freedom, um, not because it makes me feel good about myself um, because, because I've worked through lots of pain and lots of tears to get to a place where it's like if this all disappeared I'd be okay like I know that I'm worthy and you know worthy of existence and I don't have to prove that um, but this is what the begin this is what the doorway way in of working on your relationship with food and weight and body is and so when you have that feeling of like oh but I do care what people think about my body Give yourself the grace to say, well, of course you do. You were taught that this is supposed to, ha this is how you're supposed to be. You're supposed to want people to adore you for how you look. Hi, thank you, Betsy. I appreciate that. It's wonderful. I love it. Um, I appreciate that you are, are feeling, finding value in this. Um, and so we got to start working on like who we are. And a lot of times we don't know who that is underneath all these decades of trying to be thinner, trying to perfect our food, um, you know, doing movement we don't want to really be doing. And so I encourage you to start to think about, gosh, if I, if this all disappeared, this all, you know, if people stop caring about bodies and calories and all that kind of stuff, like who would I be and what would people maybe appreciate me for? And that's, and even if there's no people, what would you appreciate yourself for? Can you make a list? That's the kind of things, the answer to the cue, you know, the answer to the question of like, how do I unhook this is give yourself some grace and forgive yourself 
and don't shame yourself for the fact that like, yeah, I wanted to be thinner so people might like me more or think I'm tough and strong because I can go to the gym and outlast everybody. Um, that took me a long time to work through. Um, but it can be done. It's just more about like maybe for our starters, stopping the compulsive exercise or cutting it off by five minutes or whatever you need to do. So exploring these issues is how you're going to get free. And one little snippet, don't try to do everything at once. Pick a thing. You know, pick like, gosh, I'm noticing that I really care what people think about what's on my plate at the restaurant and I'm comparing myself. What's that about? And just start to um, decipher that and decode that. If you need help, I'm here to help you get there um, as efficiently as possible and take some months and years off that time that it takes you for you to get there. Um, on the, in the link below, I'm going to put, um, on, this is on my Facebook or um, my um, Tracy Brown RD page, is you'll see a link to this body bashing tool. And this is really helpful because it, when you're feeling like, okay, I have to be thinner for myself. Because people say, like, oh, I don't really care about what other people think. We always learned how we should feel about our bodies from other people. How else would we know? Like if you were raised with wolves, <laughs> you're not going to think about the size of your belly. You might notice that your belly's not as hairy as your wolf brothers and sisters, but you're not thinking that it's too big. We learned these things. And so um, it's really important. So this body bashing tool is really important for you to start to see like why it is you believe that, you know, maybe having a smaller body, um, what it's going to get you or why it's so important. Um, that's how you start to unhook that. But I really encourage you... Um, to have compassion for the fact that you might feel bad about how you feel about this and it's not your fault. In fact, you're doing some really, really brave work by deciding like, hey, maybe you don't have to think and believe like everybody else does because one, that hasn't been serving you. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't be watching this video um, and maybe you're like me and you recognize there has to be something more than like caring about what people think about my body. Um, you know, caring about how I mean, me caring about how people think about how long I'm in the gym or how you know when people uh, it was just double edged sword, sword right so when people used to tell me oh my gosh you know you eat so healthy on one hand it would make me feel like a smidge of relief but really just made me feel bad like oh I don't want people to put me on a pedestal for like me eating tuna in a salad ew that's nothing that means nothing that doesn't that's not who I am and it doesn't make me a virtuous person because food is just food. It doesn't make me better than anybody else. And what I desperately wanted was connection. And I didn't know how to do that in a, a way because I didn't really fully know who I was and to be comfortable with that. And that's what, we, that's what we're here to work on. And so the how of that is, you know, where did it come from that you feel like that you're not good enough? And so if you're not sure about how to do that, you know, message me and I'd love to help you get started on figuring that out. So... Anyway, I hope this was helpful, and um, you'll be seeing me again next week. Or I'm not sure when I'm posting this video. It might you know, be other places this weekend. I'm not sure. But I appreciate everybody who listens to this live and on you know, the replays. If you feel like this is really helpful, that somebody else you know really needs to hear this, please share it with them. It might be just that other perspective that they've never heard before or they, they've been hoping or praying for. And so... Um, you know, I hope that's the, what the gift of this is, is sharing all that. So thank you so much, and I hope you have a great day. And I'm going to try to show you guys if I can walk. Oh, the sun's the sun is in our face. We can't see it. Oh, I'm sorry, you guys. Next time, maybe I should get a new camera. What do you guys think? If you think that, like, man, Tracy, you could really invest in, like, one of those sticks to show us more stuff where you're at. Because I like to do a lot of outside videos. And the reason I do that is because nature is really grounding for me. And, um... It's less distracting, you know, less distracting from the thoughts, um, all that kind of good stuff. So I'm going to walk backwards so the sun is not um, in your face. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up here, but I'm around basically like this ginormous butterfly garden, and it's really pretty. And so I encourage you to get out and help use, help use nature. Just a little side note, use nature to help you think and feel a little bit more. So I'll talk to you all soon. Take care. Bye.